Now, I've been sent some fantastic photographs from a customer who's got a sweating roof. This is the roof that he's built. He hasn't finished the build inside yet, and luckily enough for him, he hasn't. And already I can see interesting problems on this roof. Only one air brick here, but let's move on. This is what it looks like inside at the moment. You can just see the insulation uh, running across here. And of course, we look on the outside here, um, no air bricks, you would think that it's a, um, no air vents, you'd think that it's a warm roof. Look inside, insulation down below, so this is formed as a cold roof. We look again, more more damage, we look inside, this is where it butts up against the original house, uh, and again, more uh, internal sweating. So, you know, what's the problem? The problem is it, the the way that it's been constructed. First of all, um, this is quite nice detailing. If you look at the way he's nicely cut all of this in all the way around, that's absolutely great. Foamed it all, sealed it all up really nicely, but he's cut in lights into it and it's not airtight anymore. So any moisture down below is going to move up. Now we've got to be fair, this extension hasn't been finished yet. So there's probably a lot of um, uh, a lot of wet brickwork and a lot of moisture in this roof. That's gone up through all of this and it's gone uh, and it's condensed on the back of the OSB board which is on the other side of this. But the way this gentleman was going with this roof seemed to well is definitely wrong um, he needs to increase the ventilation but luckily enough he didn't get too far and he's taken out a lot of the uh, insulation for us to be able to see and learn from his mistakes now interestingly enough if you look he was thinking of taping all the joints and not putting a vapor barrier up which really is just is not the way to go you're going to need a vapor barrier put up there in fact if I go back to this picture here the vapor barrier needs to be continuous starting from the wall and sealed to the wall running across the whole of the bottom and up the side of the light well uh, the vapor barrier has always got to be on the inside of the insulation and it's got to be sealed and that vapor barrier is also stopping the air from moving from the inside outwards because with air you're going to get the transfer of moisture as well so we've seen this photograph we go over to this one this is uh, where the uh, extension butts up against the house and uh, we can see the end of the rafters just here where they've been cut off. He needs to make sure that there's good ventilation from inside this area that will move up into the uh, cold space above his loft insulation and he needs to make sure that there's good venting inside the loft above there and again can't have the holes cut through with the lighting. Now if we look at this there's a trimmer that runs through here um, which is stopping the flow from this end of the roof running right the way across to the other end of the roof so realistically if he was to cut holes into the um, furring that runs across here and the furring is quite nice and fat at the back of the roof um, so he's got a good opportunity of cutting some nice big holes in here so that any air that flows in here can go across sidewards and of course at the very at the other end of the roof there and the other end of the roof there he can also uh, increase the ventilation so that can blow through that way and that can blow through that way now we're looking out towards the back garden and you can see the UPVC fascia just there. It's not been fitted perfectly tight up against the bottom of the OSB board here. However, realistically that gap should have, um, because there is a gap there, uh, some kind of fly screen to stop flies, spiders and things like that getting inside. But I know because I'm going to show you in a second that down below on the soffit board there's a nice vent that runs all the way through. Now a good part, a good detailing that he's got here, I can see this glue which is dripping down the side of this timber here and that means that he's glued the OSB onto the board, uh, onto the um, joists here which run through which is is not often done but when it is done it makes the roof unbelievably rigid it stops what's called uh, slip on the roof which means that it's far far stronger uh, and more stable so that's a, no a lovely detail we can just see the thinner edge of the um, furring coming down here and he could still cut out sections of that uh, so that he can get cross 
uh, ventilation running right away through from right to left at this point because he's going to have good ventilation coming up from the front he's also going to make sure that his insulation which this assume is going to be a hundred mil in thickness so it's going to come halfway the height of this comes all the way down and and goes over the top of this wall plate and then he can foam along the bottom it must go at least 50 to 100 mil over the top of the wall plate so that you can continue the thermal element of the wall up and then across into the um, insulation of the roof we're looking at the other end here um, we've already seen how fat these are and here we can see there's loft insulation there that needs to be moved back a little bit further now looking from the top uh, I know he did this in conjunction with his next door neighbor so this is someone else's roof over here so we're only concerned with this but one of the things that comes to light here is the color of this timber this timber is too bright to be a treated timber and all this should have been built out of a treated timber nevertheless um, it's a, a, it's a nice job um, uh, and I've also I've talked to him about this and he's going to treat all of this from the inside with a uh, a special treatment so um, all is not lost but what would have been the best thing to do on this roof would have been to put some battens at this stage going across from left to right uh, every 400 right the way across this roof then putting the deck in on top that way he would have increased the cross ventilation everywhere because as I've just said to you there's no cross ventilation here um, because this is a blind each one of these is blind at this end there's no way of getting venting to it so you've got movement of the air coming in that way but it won't move in if it's got nowhere to go hence why chopping out bits at the top and on this chopping out bits at the top there means that any venting which is running up that end there can blow up that end and come this way vice versa and all the way around there now on the outside here um, some lovely detailing I, detailing I can see a vent there and I know there's a vent going down the side now the vent going down the side actually doesn't vent anything because you've got joist ends here and there's no joist ends here you've got one joist tight against the wall so to increase the ventilation again if he was to cut into that top of that joist uh, furring goes across he can make this one vent across and into that which will just help increase everything that you can do to increase the ventilation on a cold roof is always going to help this is at the back that's a lovely detail uh, when the walls rendered that's all going to look lovely and he's got a nice big airflow going in which can go around this is the vent down the side that's great as well so this is the roof when it's finished um, and uh, it's got a lovely fall you can see the fall on there everything looks great this just hope that um, when he did the upstands here he turned this around with the the roof finish that he's got and he put these on top afterwards so that there's a, a, a good uh, overlap on that but you know what a lovely roof um, it's a shame that he didn't get it right from the very beginning but it's salvageable hopefully this helps speak soon